and pop, zero rounds, still a virgin. Let's see the no-go. Oh, you like that, you like that dirty, dirty girl. Ah, yeah, one more time. Woo! All right, all right, all good on the no-go. Hi guys, so Zastava and Pap straight from Serbia landed at our show. Uh, it, it's entering the 5,000 rounds. And uh, let me start from the beginning, uh, guys. Uh, as you know, these rifles are imported to United States uh, in the single stack configuration. So as you can see, the center is cutting out the receiver to accept the regular AK magazines. This is because of our dump uh, import loss. So when you will get those rifles, I strongly encourage you to clean up the receiver from the metal chips. You will find probably the metal chips inside the receiver inside the chamber, inside the barrel, and uh, check the gas tube as well, all right? First things first. Also, what I have changed on this rifle is uh, that rifle has a so-called uh, the paper clip pin, which is holding the pins for the trigger, and they are known, I have seen this with my own eyes, guys, those pins, they snap, uh, those paper clips snap, the pins are falling out, and then you are chasing uh, on the field the, the, the trigger pins, because, uh, you know, the, they are not holding up. So this is what I changed. I changed, I put the uh, retainer plate and you will see the pictures uh, when I will take the rifle apart. You will see the pictures from KNS with anti-rotating bolts. I have never used them. I wanna test them as, as, as well. So that's a great opportunity. That being said, let's start with uh, the cosmetic, uh, cosmetic issues as always we do. The rifle is pretty much straight, guys. Uh, right out of the box, uh, it was very close to the zero. I just make the little bit adjustment to the left and on the front side, but uh, it looks really, really straight to me. I don't see any problems with either rear post or front post. Just a slight adjustment on the left and uh, we are shooting uh, right in the center of the target. However, what I have spotted during the magazine dumps, we are having uh, tons of problems with that freaking cleaning rod. The cleaning rod continues to walk out all the time and it doesn't matter how many, uh, you know, uh, how fast you're shooting, it just keeps walking out. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put it to the box uh, for the next episode because I don't want to lose it at the end of this test. If the rifle will survive, of course the rifle goes to you guys. So I want you to have a cleaning rod. So uh, we're probably going to run it in the next episodes without the cleaning rod. Uh, and as I said, it doesn't matter. I tap it in as hard as I can. It was for sure in the slot and that cleaning rod just keeps walking out. I'm guessing it's because of the furniture uh, that it's not putting enough tension, enough uh, pressure on that cleaning rod and that's why it's walking out from the recoil. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, as I said, this is the cosmetic issue. Another thing uh, I have noticed when we were shooting, uh, there is some rusty like water coming out from underneath of the side rail. Uh, I don't know what is this for sure, okay? It has a rusty color, it could be a Cosmolite, I don't know. It was here and it here is, here is different than it was uh, at front on the gas block. Uh, you know, it, it has a rusty color, it could be a Cosmolite, could be uh, basically a, a rusty water, I don't know to be honest with you, okay? But uh, it is there, you will see the pictures uh, and uh, it, it's all over, all over from underneath of the side rail. Uh, this is uh, really, you can see how it's looking like. Uh, speaking about uh, other things, uh, we did the barrel test today on that rifle and I'm happy to report that it was a shift. So first what we do, we shoot the 25 yards, uh, the five shots group, and uh, I didn't shoot, you know, the, the, the greatest group ever. Uh, and uh, I think it may be, you know, because it, it's a new rifle, I don't know, whatever it was. But a group was there, all we're looking is for the center of the group. Then I do go and do the uh, four magazine dumps and uh, we have reached around 450 Fahrenheit today. Today uh, it's hot, but it's not as hot as it could be. 
uh, but we had the 450 uh, Fahrenheit on the gas block and then I immediately go back and shoot a group of next five shots uh, to see if there is a point of impact shift and the group shifted by around one inch uh, on the vertical motion one inch uh, higher so uh, you know this is 25 yards so we will be around uh, four MOA shift four inches shift around four inches shift at the 100 yards something what you should know so when you will heat up the barrel uh, this is uh, you know what's going to happen not uncommon thing uh, and this is well within the norm the spec what I have seen from some other rifles but I just want to let you know that this is what happened as far as accuracy go as far as accuracy go I had no problems nailing the targets uh, from uh, just the magazine to the ground iron sights at uh, 200 yards I think I have scored uh, without any issues 10 consecutive hits on target uh, and uh, that's from 200 yards this is as far as I went today uh, not you know nothing special to brag about it but as you can see you will have no problems nailing the targets with iron sights uh, and this uh, rifle all right so this is let me pull out the bolt carrier and bolt uh, let's talk for a second about the trigger trigger is a century trigger RAK trigger rock trigger uh, and uh, as you can see this is where I put it that KNS retention plate and the pins and it hold up beautifully all right I still can see CIIs. I really clean it up that receiver uh, before we went shooting uh, from all the chips and everything and I still can see finding the metal chips so they were stuck somewhere uh, over here so really do that the nice cleaning you can see where they they made those cuts uh, you know here here you can clearly see the cuts made on the on the receiver to uh, you know basically accept the magazines all right uh, as far as the rifle performance uh, we had uh, two malfunctions today one was uh, basically a failure to feed the round got jammed uh, on the way to the chamber and that was on the full metal jacket wolf ammo and the second time uh, that this was the same uh, problem the round didn't go to the chamber from two different magazines one was the Bakelite magazine and one was the regular steel magazine uh, nothing alarming it could be a magazine uh, all the magazines fit perfectly they did a really nice job there is not that much of the wobble it's not like the wobble is a bad thing on the AK but there's not that much of the wobble and all the magazines fit very nicely uh, to the to the rifle um, now uh, let's talk about the rivets I haven't noticed any you know anything bad with the rivets the rivets are rather nicely made uh, pressed uh, nothing is uh, you know uh, jumping out or anything in the next episode we'll start putting a pressure on the rifle uh, doing the drop tests and things like this so we'll see how those rivets will hold up but so far so good all pins everything stays in uh, intact all right let's start with uh, the bolt carrier uh, there is a lot of talk and guys this is how the rifle I didn't lubricate the rifle rifle was uh, lubricated uh, I received the rifle uh, which was you know basically uh, covered with oil uh, straight out of the factory and I'm guessing it was done by the Zastava uh, that way so uh, you don't have to even lubricate just clean up remember uh, clean up those uh, metal chips all right let's look let's look at the bolt carrier guys uh, and there is a lot of talk about the deformation of that end piece on the bolt carrier and as you can see I will clean it with my finger uh, and yeah there are sharp edges here so after the first thousand we do have a slight deformation of the tail on the bolt carrier and uh, this was something what the people were uh, you know uh, concerned about it and talking about uh, and we'll monitor how this is going to progress but I can tell you right away I can see it uh, there is a deformation on that tail it's nothing bad yet but when you slide your fingers like this you can you can feel the sharp edges from the metal by basically folding uh, that way and it has some strange mark it has F uh, like Foxtrot uh, on the on the tail I don't know why uh, but it is marked uh, that way other than this uh, how we are looking in the channel here uh, all is looking good 
how is that uh, okay let me see the wobble there is a wobble on the piston head but that's absolutely normal for the AKs guys uh, it's not bothering me of course the rivet is made the horizontally uh, to keep the piston not not vertically <laughs> like on some, some monstrosities I have seen uh, and the piston is wobbling but uh, you know that's normal uh, I haven't seen uh, you know uh, this is not affecting the performance all right as far as the bolt carrier uh, not that much to see on it right now um, it's it's looking good we'll monitor uh, progress of uh, the deformation here uh, how we are doing on the bolt face? A uh, bolt face is looking absolutely fine. Um, locking locks. Oh, ejector claw. Guys, this rifle has some insane, a freaking insane ejection pattern. Uh, it's at least uh, 12, 13 yards uh, for the ejection. So, uh, really, we have to keep wandering off like and look for the spent shells so the beautiful cows won't eat the shells we collect the shells uh, from the pasture field uh, but it, it is very strong uh, ejection pattern and uh, really 13 maybe even 14 yards uh, really really strong uh, strong run all right this is how the bolt is looking like i don't see anything uh, as of right now let me move it with the finger clean it no, it's all looking good on the locking locks at this point, uh, all perfectly fine. Firing pin, um, no deformation as well, and uh, it's just the nice, beautiful uh, metal. Uh, if you like, uh, as you know, the Zestava keeps those uh, like, a, you know, the, the, the chrome plated, uh, the, it looks like a chrome plated, uh, but it's just the polished metal uh, on the bolt carrier and the bolt, uh, very cool. All right, so uh, bolt is looking uh, good both on, on both ends and on the locking lots, locks. Let me quickly look into the receiver uh, on the all sides of the trunnion. I don't see anything, uh, any you know deformations as of right now. Man, there are some sharp edges here. I will take a picture uh, and circle it for you guys. Uh, but uh, this is just how they did it, man. Uh, how they how they formed those uh, that those trunnions and they really don't care about polishing it out or anything. Um, that's how they do those rifles. Uh, you know there is some crude crude uh, manufacturing methods, but hey, it works, right? Uh, and uh, chamber chamber is uh, looking okay. Uh, of course, uh, you know barrel uh, is uh, forged cold hammer forged barrel for sure. It has number two mark uh, on the barrel for the journal, and uh, it's looking, you know, very, very cool. The safety, safety is working perfectly fine, but they leave the full auto safety on those uh, rifles. Uh, with that trigger, it doesn't bother uh, anything. It works perfectly fine, but remember, this is the full auto safety, not the semi-auto safety. All right, so at the bottom of the trunnion, how we are looking at the bottom of the trunnion, uh, it's looking good too, and you should be seeing pictures. See, this is where the cutouts were made. Uh, they are not the beautiful, most beautiful cutouts uh, on the you know face of the planet, but uh, hey, whatever works, right? And the mag release catch, all is looking okay here. Let me have a quick look into the gas tube, and that should be it at this point. This is the, if I will pull it out, the gas tube. The rear of the gas tube is looking good. Let me do the pirate for you guys. The gas tube inside is looking awesome. So, okay, you want me to do the pirate? <laughs> okay, we got the pirate done on the gas tube. And uh, how we are looking inside the gas block? Gas block is looking good too. And uh, nothing really uh, bad. A little bit smoked wood, not bad. Smells good, smells good, guys. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all we got at this point. Uh, everything is holding up. It was the first thousand rounds on this rifle. Uh, some minor, minor uh, problems, but uh, other than the cleaning rod, 
uh, you know, basically telling us, uh, hey, see ya, losers, I want to jump out of that ship. Not much is happening. So as I said, next episode, we'll start putting some pressure on it and we'll see what's going to happen. So far, so good. And, uh, you know, big hi to the guys from Serbia. I know we have a lot of fans, so uh, stay tuned, guys. I will do more on that rifle for sure. Thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. No go gauge after the first thousand. No go gauge to wrap. Can I move forward? No go gauge, go forward. No go gauge to wrap, moving forward. And it's still good. A lot of people probably got relief right now. It's like, Arr! let me try it one more time so we are not cheating. Okay, let me put it in. Arr! Arr! I can't. Let me slam it. Nope, it's still not going. So, still good. After the first thousand, still good. Still good. And the whole Serbia just said, Whew!